Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And then, on your hustle. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Parents, your children of junior high and high school age will soon be making decisions that could affect their whole lives. For right now, they're facing the problem of selecting next year's school courses. Now, no matter what career your child is thinking about, it is vitally important that he take enough math and science in high school. Otherwise, he may be severely handicapped later on. So, even though your child may not yet have made up his mind about what he wants to be, see that he knows the importance of math and science high school courses to his future. High school advisors will help him, and you... Decide just what math and science courses he should take to keep the door to his future open. This message is brought to you as a public service. Duke was a black and white mongrel who belonged to a crooked gambler named Kino Dunn. Though he served his master faithfully, the only thanks he ever received were kicks and brutal blows from the gambler's Malacca King. One night, Kino was caught cheating in a card game, and in the fight that followed, both Kino and Duke were savagely beaten by the gambler's intended victims. Later, after he had been thrown out of the cafe, Kino turned to Duke in a senseless rage and began to take out his temper on the dog. You lousy must. Let him beat me up, would you? What in blaze do you suppose I keep you for? Oh, sure. Go ahead and whine. While you're at it, I'll give you something else to whine about. Take this! Take this! For a moment, Duke cowered weakly beneath the blows of the gambler's cane. His body already bruised and bloody from the mauling he'd received inside the cafe. Then suddenly he could stand no more. The memory of all he had suffered at the hands of his brutal master surged up inside him. With a half-crazed snarl, he sprang at Kino. The gambler staggered back in surprise and terror. But Duke was too weak to press home his attack. And Kino quickly shook him off. Now then, you treacherous cur, I'll teach you who's master. Once again, Kino began showering blows on Duke with his Malacca cane. He was still at it a few moments later when a heavy hand suddenly descended on his shoulder. Hold it, mister. Hey, what's the idea? It's that dog again, and you'll regret it. Don't tell me what to do, Marty. That dog's mine. I'll beat him as much as... You're not fit to own a dog. Get up on your feet. What do you think you're going to do now? I'm placing you under arrest. Now get moving, mister. You and I are going to headquarters. Kino was tried and sentenced on a charge of cruelty to animals. And as a result of his conviction, Duke was taken away from him and turned over to the care of the mounted police. His physical injuries soon began to heal, but the damage to his spirit wasn't mended quite so easily. One morning, Sergeant Preston and Scotty McCracken, a veteran dog trainer employed by the mounted police, stood watching Duke as he prowled nervously back and forth inside one of the dog runs back of Mounty headquarters. Oh, I hate to say it, Sergeant, but I'm afraid that poor dog's a hopeless case. The instant you step inside the run, he flies at your throat. Give him time, Scotty. That beating you got from Kino Dunn was enough to ruin any dog's temper. Aye, but we've had him here a week now. 
By this time, we should have been able to jolt him down a wee bit. Perhaps King can help us win his confidence. Oh, how do you mean? Oh, a Duke can learn to trust King. Perhaps he can learn to trust King's master. Come here, fellow. King, I'm going to put you inside the run of the Duke. I'll try to make friends with him, boy. <laughs> Go on in, fellow. As King entered the run, the Duke bristled and advanced toward him with bared fangs. After that, things happened fast. With a ferocious snarl, Duke charged at King. <laughs> Mike Dog reared and met the rush with his chest, knocking Duke off his feet. The fight that followed was bitter but brief. When it was over, Duke lay helpless and quivering at the mercy of Yukon King. Look at the poor beast. He's expecting King to finish him off. Well, he's in for his first surprise. Instead of burying his fangs in Duke's throat, King merely nudged him gently with his muzzle. Then he turned and trotted back toward the sergeant. Good dog, King. Good dog. That evening, Duke received his second lesson from King. What is it you're aiming to do with that caribou meat, Sergeant? Feed Duke and King. You mean you're going inside the run with him? That's what I mean. The sergeant opened the gate and stepped inside the run, holding out the caribou meat as he did so. Here, boys. With a savage growl, Duke came charging forward and prepared to spring at the sergeant's throat. <laughs> and he was lying helplessly on his side, and King was standing over him with bared fangs. Duke had learned his second lesson. The sergeant seemed to pay no attention to what had happened. All right, King. You first, boy. <laughs> King trotted forward and took the piece of caribou meat which the sergeant was holding out to him. Now it's your turn, Duke. This one's for you. Come on, boy. King looked down approvingly. The next few shares of meat Duke took willingly from the sergeant's hand. But the last piece the sergeant withheld. <laughs> Sorry, Duke, but you don't get this one until you let me patch your head. As the sergeant reached out his left hand, Duke cringed and gave a nervous, deep-throated growl. Instantly, King warned him with a snarl. Duke quieted down and stood quivering tensely as the sergeant's hand came slowly toward him. Finally, the hand touched his head, patted it gently, and began to scratch him behind the ear. Good old Duke. You've had a hard time of it, haven't you, boy? Well, it's all over now. Good day. One evening, a few weeks later, Sergeant Preston paid a visit to the cabin of a miner named Frank Calvert. Frank's wife, Amy, opened the door. Well, hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Amy. Oh, come on in. Thanks. Frank and his young son, Buddy, were seated around the fireplace. Well, hello there, Sergeant. Hello, Frank. Hi, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Buddy. Here, let me take your pocket. Oh, thanks, Frank. I'm King, Sergeant. Outside with a friend of his. A friend? You mean another dog? That's right. As a matter of fact, that's what I came to see you about. What do you mean, Sergeant? Well, uh, you've been wanting another dog ever since Sparky died, haven't you? I'll say I have. Trouble is, dogs are too expensive up here in the Yukon Territory, Sergeant. My claim paying off so poorly, we just haven't been able to afford another dog for Buddy. Well, it just so happens this friend of King's is looking for a new home. Would you folks be willing to take him in? Oh, boy! Of course we would, Sergeant. You bet we would. Golly, I can hardly wait to see him. In that case, suppose I bring him inside and you look him over. Oh, buddy, what do you mean? Come on, Duke. You too, King. Gee, look. He's a wonderful dog. Why, why, he's almost as nice as King. I was sure you'd think so, buddy. He does look like a nice dog. What did you say his name was, Sergeant? Duke. Duke. Say, wait a minute. I've seen this dog before. He belonged to that crooked gambler, Keno Dunn. This dog's vicious. Don't judge him too hastily, Frank. Remember, Keno Dunn was a vicious person, and the dog modeled himself after his master. But Duke's changed in the last few weeks. With King's help, I think we've turned him into a very gentle dog. Of course he's gentle, Frank. Why, you can tell that by his manner. Just look at the way he responds when you pet him. I'll admit he doesn't act the way he used to when Keno owned him. May I keep him then, Dad? <laughs> All right, son. At least it won't hurt to give him a chance. Oh, boy! <laughs> In the months that followed, Duke more than proved that he deserved the chance which Frank Calvert had given him. Not only did he become deeply attached to Buddy, hardly ever letting the boy out of his sight... But he won the trust and affection of the whole family by the gentleness of his character. But things weren't going well for the Calverts. One day, Frank paid a visit to Hiram Digby, the manager of the Dawson City Bank. Yes, Calvert, what can I do for you? I suppose you've come to pay back that loan? I did come to see you about the loan, Mr. Digby, but not to pay it back. What? As a matter of fact, I, 
I just don't have the money. You don't have the money? But payment is due the day after tomorrow. If you can't pay me back, I'll have to foreclose. Now look, Mr. Digby, the gold is there all right. In the last few weeks, I seem to have struck a new vein. If you'll just give me a little more time, I'm sure I can pay you back with extra interest. Mm. Well, Calvert, I've known you for some time, and I'm quite certain of your integrity. Perhaps in your case, I might make an exception. If you will, Mr. Digby, I'm sure you won't have cause to regret it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll be going out your way tomorrow. While I'm there, I'll stop off and inspect your claim. I'll give you my decision at that time. All right. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Hey, kids, we're waiting for you out at the ballpark these days. Everybody has fun cheering the players as they sock home runs, slide into base, whip through double plays. Get in on the fun, the excitement, the hot dogs and Cracker Jacks. Come out to the ball game as guest of your favorite team. You can now see major or minor league baseball games free if you are 12 years or younger and bring a paying adult like mom or dad. Here's all you do to get your free ticket. Get a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Tear off the box top and send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Details are on the tickets. We'll give you that address again during the program, so grab pencil and paper now. For each free ticket, send a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Send the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10 and you'll get two free tickets. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't miss the big game. Send now. Now to continue. On the day after Frank Calvert paid his visit to the bank in Dawson, Hiram Bigby stopped off at the Calvert place to inspect Frank's claim and announced his decision as to whether or not he would grant an extension on the loan. The cabin was perched on a steep hillside overlooking the trail which ran along the banks of the creek. Oh, boy! Oh, God! Oh, boy! Getting off the sled, Banker Digby spoke to his driver. Well, you stay here, Jed. I'm going up to the cabin on foot. Think you can make it up the hillside, Mr. Digby? Certainly I can make it up the hillside. Just because I walk with a limp and I have to use a cane doesn't mean that I'm completely helpless. Okay, Mr. Digby, I just thought you might want some help. Well, I don't. As the banker began trudging up the path that led to the cabin, he didn't see Buddy Calvert coasting downhill on his sled, with Duke running happily alongside him. The boy and the dog were hidden from his view by a screen of trees. As a result, when he finally did see them coming, it was too late to get out of the way. Look out, you young fool! Well, it crashed into the banker, knocking him off his feet. Golly, Mr. Digby, I'm awful sorry. Oh, confounded young idiot. Why didn't you steal out of the way? I tried you, but it was too late. Here, let me help you up. Get your hands off me. I'm not helpless. Hey, Sunday, what you need is a good shake. I'm going to give you just that. Please, please, Mr. Like I didn't mean to bump you. Huh? It was more than Duke could bear to see a stranger laying violent hands on his young master. With a growl, he seized one corner of the banker's coat in his jaws and began tugging. Uh, let go of me, you blessed nut. Duke, let it go. If you wax with his cane, will teach him a lesson. The banker raised his malachi cane and began showering blows on Duke. The dog gave a convulsive shudder. He remembered the last time he had been beaten by such a cane, wielded by Keen O'Donnell. Suddenly, Duke seemed to go berserk. With a snarl, he sprang at the banker's throat. Stop, Let's get him up. Duke, stop it. Let go of him. Before Jed, the driver, together with Mr. and Mrs. Calvert, who rushed out of their cabin, arrived on the scene and succeeded in separating Duke from the outraged banker. Are you all right, Mr. Digby? I'm still alive. Is that what you mean? By Sunday, it's a miracle. That's the way that vicious mud went for me. Oh, I can't imagine what got into him. He's always been so gentle. Yes, you. <laughs> that dog's a public menace. After all, Mr. Digby, you were shaking, buddy. And then you turned on Duke and struck him with your cane. I was trying to make him let go of my coattail, that's all. Duke evidently misunderstood your intentions. Yeah, don't make excuses for him. He tried to tear me to pieces, that's what he did. He tell it. I demand that you have this dog destroyed. What? I'm sorry, Mr. Digby, but he means too much to Buddy. To all of us, for that matter. Sure, that's your attitude, is it, huh? 
Yeah, Calvert, I reckon you know why I came here today. Of course, you came to inspect my claim. You tell me whether you'd grant me an extension of time on my loan. Yes. And if you expect me to grant that extension, you had better have this dog done away with immediately. But, Mr. Digby, please try to understand. I understand well enough. You have this dog destroyed or I foreclose tomorrow and take over your claim. All right, then go ahead and foreclose. Duke is one of the finest dogs I've ever known. I don't think that he should enter into money relations. <laughs> uh, please think it over until tomorrow. I'm sure you'll agree with me. At that same moment, in a hotel room in Dawson City, Keno Dunn was talking to a man named Smokey Mifflin. So you've given up gambling, huh, Keno? No, I haven't given it up. This happens I've doped out a smarter way to pick up some cash. Is that what you want to talk to me about? That's right. How'd you like to help me rob the Dawson City Bank tonight? Tonight? You crazy? Not by a long shot. I got the whole thing figured out. My scheme is foolproof. All right, Keno, I'm listening. Well, on the last day of every month, meaning the day, for instance, Hiram Digby, the manager, stays late at the bank, checking over accounts. All by himself? That's right. He checks over the books personally. He works in his office at the back of the bank. When he leaves, he lets himself out by the back door. Well, go on. You and I'll be hiding out in the alley back of the bank. When we see him come out the door, we rush up, stick a gun in his ribs. And we force him to open up the vault, grab all the cash, and make our getaway. What do we do about Digby? We lock him in the vault and leave him there. It'll be morning before the police even find out there's been a robbery. Uh, yeah. Well, it's under the job. Sounds like it ought to be a cinch. Well, how about it? All right, Kino, count me in. That evening, after supper, Frank and Amy Calvert sat talking around the fireplace. Their faces were tense with work. I never should have lost my temper with Hiram Digby this afternoon. Maybe I should have agreed to have Duke destroyed. Oh, but Frank, well, I break Buddy's heart. You know that. Of course I know it. And I also know that if Digby forecloses tomorrow, we'll be destitute. We won't even have a roof over our heads. Goodness, it's a terrible situation. I don't know what to think. There must be something we can do. Buddy was in his room, supposedly reading a book. But actually, he had overheard everything his parents were saying. Duke, who was lying on the floor at his master's feet, gazed up into Buddy's eyes as the boy said, Golly, Duke. Mom and Dad are awful worried, and it's all our fault. I just can't let them do away with you. But if I don't, we'll lose our claim and this cabin and everything. A short time later, Buddy emerged from his room. He was wearing his parka and mucklucks. Where are you going, Buddy? Off to play for a while with Duke. Well, you have to come in in just a few minutes. It's nearly bedtime, you know. All right, Mom. Come on, Duke. Oh, 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 oh. Later that same evening, Sergeant Preston stopped off to visit the Kelvins. Oh, good evening, Sergeant. Hello, Frank. Come on in. Hi. Sergeant Preston. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Something wrong? We can't find Buddy. I don't know whether anything's happened to him or not. He went out to play about an hour and a half ago. And I told him to come in in just a few minutes because it was nearly bedtime. Well, he still hasn't come back. We can't find him anywhere. You've tried the neighbors. I've tried everywhere, but no luck. Tell you the truth, I'm afraid he's run away. Well, what makes you think that? It's all on account of Duke. I think Buddy was afraid we might decide to have the dog destroyed. Destroyed? What's the matter? He hasn't turned vicious, has he? Well, not exactly, but he went for Banker Digby today. He was ready to tear him to pieces, in fact, until we pulled him off and calmed him down. How did it happen? Well, it was like this. Banker Digby came to visit us. Frank today. told Sergeant Preston well, the whole story. When he was through, the sergeant said, Do you have a piece of clothing that Buddy's worn recently? You mean so King will be able to trail him? That's right. Once King gets his scent, I'm sure we can find oh, him. Sergeant, we'll certainly appreciate it if he can. I'll get you something of Buddy's right away. I'm going with you, Sergeant. I'll get my partner and hitch up my team. <laughs> We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. There's the wind-up, the pitch, the bases are loaded, and... It's a two-bagger, and the game's tied up in the last of the ninth. Say, kids, wouldn't you give anything to be right there at that exciting moment? Well, come out to the ballpark as guest of your favorite team. You can see major or minor league baseball games free if you're 12 years or younger. Just bring mom or dad a paying adult. To get your free ticket, here's all you do. 
Get a package of Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Tear off a box top and send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Details are on every ticket. Get the whole family to go. You'll all have fun at the ballpark. For your free ticket, send a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Send the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10 and you'll get two free tickets. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Send now. With King in the lead, Sergeant Preston and Frank followed Buddy's train after leaving the captain. The scent led to an imposing log house on the outskirts of Dawson. Okay. Oh. 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 This is Banker Digby's house. That's right. A few moments later, the door was opened by Hiram Digby's housekeeper. Sergeant Preston. Hello, Aggie. Has a boy named Buddy Calvert been here this evening? Why, yes. A boy was here just about, oh, ten minutes ago looking for Mr. Digby. Oh? Said he wanted to talk to him about something very important. So I told him Mr. Digby was over at the bank. Thanks, Aggie. Come on, Frank. We'll probably find him there. At that same moment, Buddy was just arriving at the bank. After he had knocked on the door to attract attention and shown his face at the barred window of Hiram Digby's office, the banker unlocked the door and let him inside. Well, then, what's all this nonsense about wanting to talk to me, especially at this time of the night? And what in blazes is the idea of bringing this mutt here to my office? It's Duke that I came to see you about, Mr. Digby. Huh? Couldn't you please forgive him for what happened? I promise you I'll punish him. I'll even keep him tied up on a leash. That cur is too vicious to be trusted. The only safe way is to have him destroyed. And if we don't, then, then you won't give Dad that extension on his loan? That's right. I'll foreclose tomorrow unless that dog was put away for good. All right, Mr. Digby. If that's the only way, then then I'll give up, Duke. Only you take him away and have him destroyed. I don't want to be around when it's done. Hmm. Very yeah, well. I'm glad you're being sensible about it. We'll take him over to Mother Police Headquarters and let them dispose of him. I'll get my coat. After putting on his coat and hat, Hiram Digby snuffed out the lamp and started toward the back door with Buddy and Duke at his heels. As he opened the door and stepped outside, two menacing figures suddenly loomed up in the moonlight. Back inside, mister. Start reaching. Yes, we And we're carrying guns. Now hurry up and do like I say. As Kino stepped to the doorway with his gun pushed in the banker's ribs, Duke caught the scent of the man who had beaten him. He cracked with a ferocious snarl. Kino was taken completely off guard by the suddenness and ferocity of the attack. As he struggled desperately to defend himself, Smokey explained, Shoot, Kino, the noise will be heard. Well, let's do something, you fool. Quick, he's killing me. Now knock him out with my gun. Duke went limp, stung by the blow. The crooks realized that Digby had slipped away from them. In the semi-darkness, they saw him bending over his desk. Get him, Smokey. Go for the gun. No, you don't. Let me see. Good work, Smokey. Hey, where's the kid? Oh, Smokey, I forgot about him. And someone's coming. Oh, it's time I'm getting out of here. Connor. Come on. Buddy had slipped out the back door while the crook's attention was occupied. At that moment, he was running toward the approaching dog team. Dad, Sergeant Preston! Push, buddy! Oh, 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 oh. What's wrong, buddy? There's two crooks back there, Sergeant. They're robbing the bank. Here they go. They're making a getaway. One thing! One oh, 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 oh. Stop in the name of the town! In their panic, the two crooks turned and began firing wildly over their shoulders as they ran. The sergeant took careful aim and fired once. Kino stumbled and fell, and a moment later, King overtook his partner. With a mighty spring, he knocked him to the ground. Come get this, Sergeant! Oh, oh, oh. I have his gun, boy. Up on your feet, mister. You're under arrest in the name of the Crown. After handcuffing Smokey and applying first aid to Kino's wound, the sergeant herded his prisoners into the back room of the bank. Hiram Digby had already recovered from the punch on the jaw which he had received. But it took several minutes to revive Duke from his dazed condition. Finally, Duke opened his eyes. And at sight of Buddy, he signified his happiness by thumping the floor weakly with his tail. Good old Duke. Will he be all right, Sergeant? Yes, I'm sure he will, Buddy. He got a bad knock on the head, but that should soon heal. Oh, golly, I'm glad of that. Well, for this sure, man. This dog hadn't been around when those two cooks appeared. There's no telling what might have happened. 
He certainly upset their plans. <laughs> oh, did my heart good the way he went for him when they stepped through that doorway. But, uh, then you don't think he should be destroyed? Destroyed? Why, well, certainly not. This dog is too valuable. <clears throat> of course, it's true. He's a bit vicious. Milk uh, is not vicious, Mr. Zigby. Yes. Yeah. I believe I can explain why he went for you the way he did. Yeah, go ahead and explain. I'm willing to listen. Tino Dunn once gave him a savage beating with a malacca cane, just like yours. The cane must have reminded the dog of that experience, so he momentarily went for a Oh, so that's it. I said it looks as though I was wrong all down the line. About that extension on my loan, Mr. Digby. No, don't you worry about that, Calvert. They're extending that loan to suit your convenience. Well... I don't know what to say, except thanks a lot. <laughs> By golly, buddy, just wait till your mother hears this news. Well, King, old boy, things seem to have worked out nicely all the way around. Once we take these two cooks to jail, this case will be closed. <laughs> The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, presented on Mutual every Sunday over most of these stations, is a listening treat especially designed for the whole family. Several generations have thrilled to the heroic exploits of Rin Tin Tin, the dog that's almost human. And now you can hear his further adventures every Sunday. The new series of Rinty's Adventures are laid in the colorful and legend-filled era of the Pioneer West. His young master is Corporal Rusty, stationed at Fort Apache. During the troublesome post-Civil War era, the Army Cavalry finds plenty of action in keeping under control the renegade Indians who set fire to the early settlers' cabins. And as members of the Fort Apache Cavalry Unit, Corporal Rusty and Rin Tin Tin are engaged in many stirring escapades. Make sure your family enjoys the pleasurable listening on The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, presented by Mutual every Sunday over most of these stations. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.